Welcome back to our fourth video in our video series for um, Living Well with Affinity. I am ever so excited to have the founder, owner uh, of Affinity Wellness in studio with me today. And I'd like to introduce you to Kyla, uh, help me, Federson. Federson. Yeah. Kyla Federson. Um, and we are going to take you through a bit of a journey today on the the background, sort of the origin story, and give you a peek into all things That's affinity. It's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we hope you will enjoy it. So, Kyla, you started, how old is Affinity Wellness? How many years? This week is 13 years. 13 yeah. years. Okay. And you, but you have been an RMT for more than that. 26. 26. Yeah, a long time. It's not <laughs> dating me at all. <laughs> not at all. So you started Affinity um, 13 years ago. What inspired you to take that leap? And it is, it is a leap of faith. It was. I mean... I had actually been a co-owner of a day spa in Canmore back when we lived in Banff years ago. Okay. Um, I've always kind of been a sole entrepreneur kind of throughout that. When we moved to um, Kelowna, I had worked for a couple other big companies and then a smaller one. And I'm not a big corporate girl. Mm. Um, there's lots of it that I don't like. And then some of the smaller stuff, I've realized I, I need a bit more structure and and need perhaps a little bit more control over kind of that quality of kind of what was going out. So had an opportunity to buy the unit on Ambrosie. Um, ah. My husband, who, dear man, helped me renovate. It was a really um, long and uh, strenuous month, but we kind of built that out and yeah. So we started with one unit. One there unit. was an opportunity to buy a single unit and it was how... How many practitioners were there when you were Me starting? And mm -hmm. one, and then two RMTs. So there's three of us. But we've had front desk from get go. Okay. Um, something my husband never loved, just me working randomly on my own, right? And some people are totally fine with that. Um, so that was kind of his motivation. However, it's been a really big part of who we are as Affinity the customer service, the ability to call someone. Have someone pick up the phone and not play phone tag. It's, yeah, um, four yeah. for this, five for that, six for that. So you your your roots then you start in uh, RMT. There's three of you. Uh, how how then we're 13 years in. We started with three RMTs. How has affinity changed over the years? And there's been a number of iterations. Yeah, we're probably on our, I don't know, 10th. Um, <laughs> it was just RMT, you know, and then we had brought on an athletic therapist and a physio um, gentleman still in town, awesome guys, now working for Interior Health, unfortunately, but um, kind of more into the neuro rehab. Mm, okay. And that all of a sudden just kind of made me realize what that added modality really did for our patients. They have a different scope um, and an ability for me to refer, you know, in-house. The patients love that, right? Mm -hmm. And athletic therapy kind of was more the active rehab portion. And it always became kind of a little bit more, you know, I, we, we say we're client-centered and it, it truly is. It was always the patients going, it'd be really nice if you had Cairo. It'd be really nice if you had physio. It'd be really nice if you, right? Because it's so hard to kind of coordinate a healthcare journey when you're going back and forth to multiple practitioners. You're not sharing charts and all that kind of stuff. So we just kind of started building that out. Sometimes it worked and then we'd grow, shrink, grow. But yeah, we've kind of just kept moving on. And true or false, a, a person's... Um, path or journey back to wellness isn't black and white. It isn't this discipline or this practitioner will solve it. It is a, it is a ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, of, of programs that can help someone come back yeah. to health. Depending on where you're at, like even an ICBC patient that comes in, I mean, ICBC has 
for better or worse, has changed their program. Um, mm. You now have the ability to get chiro and physio and massage, kinesiology, counseling. I think they've even moved into the athletic therapy, understanding it's that whole picture that really will get you back to health. Um, and just being able to have access to all of that within the clinic has made a big difference. Mm-hmm. Not everyone is, you know, for, for an ICBS patient right out of the gate, they can't do active therapy, right? So sure. maybe massage and counseling is all they can do if it was really traumatic, but then they can kind of move in as they progress. So fast forwarding to today, we have a number of practitioners in the clinic. You've done, so again, those those iterations, you bought another section of the building and then another mm-hmm. section of the building, <clears throat> and you've continued to organically grow as you? I would you... say so. Um, none of this was actually my plan. I... Uh, <laughs> I just moved. Take note, entrepreneurs. <laughs> you don't always Truly, need a plan. this was not my plan. I needed a space that I could go kind of control the quality of environment that I had and be there for my patients. And then it's grown. I needed to then find a different way for more income because it was costing me more. And then I'm working 80 plus hours a week. And so it's kind of grown organically from that. Um, now it's kind of more that holistic part. Instead of mm-hmm. just the therapy from a physical standpoint, we kind of are doing that whole holistic. So we've got the dietetics, you know, understanding nutrition is such a huge part of what we put in our body and then counseling to add to that. If we, you know, if we don't address the mental fitness or the mental health and just the physical, right, that that's not the whole picture, the not the whole human being and one has to work with the other. So They're so deeply yeah. woven together and integrated that uh, that makes sense having that large of a scope of, mm-hmm. of services for your clients. So as we, as we look mm-hmm. at Affinity Wellness today, there's a number of um, clinics and some are one and two person and some are numerous amounts of people. What is, and I think I know the answer to this, mm-hmm. Uh, what is the difference or what sets, in your opinion, what sets Affinity Wellness apart from some of the other clinics in the region? I hope what sets us apart is kind of the patient experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm probably one of your most high maintenance patients when it comes to the details, right? I see details. I am that person in the doctor's clinic who is noticing the picture on the wall that is crooked or the dust bunnies in the corner or the noise or, you know, I get distracted easily. You know, as entrepreneurs, we're busy. It's high stress. We've got a lot going on in our lives, which actually everyone in town does. If you can have a place where you can come, you know, feel seen, as a human mm-hmm. being, first of all, you know, everything from, you know, Megan and the girls at the front desk, knowing your name. And, you know, we've got notes in our charts of kind of who you are. They don't, they can't do appointments on Thursday afternoon because they've got kids at baseball, that kind of thing. Those little attention to detail, Matters. everything from the heating pads on the table and the music and the lights and just the ambiance. It's, I mean, again, come back from my experience in the spa world. That was a huge part, and how do we inter- mm, intertwine? Huge influence in the in the clinic. Yeah, that relaxation, yep. the ambiance, the feeling that goes into, you know, the rest of the therapy. So to me, it's a it's a it's the whole package, or should be the whole package. Mm-hmm. So looking at your um, your discipline, RMT, and please correct me because this is your space. Uh, I wouldn't know. I I think I understand that it's so hard on your body, your hands, to be able to perform that work for hours and hours a day and years. So the fact that you've been doing this for 26 years, mm-hmm. uh, and I understand, I've heard, that you have an amazing client retention ratio. So that says something to you and the, 
validates what you just said about how you make your patients feel. How, how, uh, what has your journey been like? How do you uh, see what you're doing in three, four, five, ten? What are you doing in 2030 uh, for you, for Kyla at Affinity Wellness? What am I doing to take care of myself? Or just, well, you know, how how, how has your journey room? been? I'm wondering what superpowers you have to be able mm-hmm. to do this for 26 years because I understand in the in specific to RMT seven, yeah. eight, nine years. I think that's a bit of a you know a fallacy misnomer. again. Mm. I'm you know I'm kind of cowgirl at heart. The you know bit of a workaholic for sure recovering workaholic um so it get i think it depends on kind of who we are as individuals and, mm, and what we fair. see as work and kind of work through um our physical health is important right whether or not we're strong and active i've had two back surgeries and a, and a knee surgery and obviously through those we've had to make some modifications it, for rmts not buying the proper equipment like we don't have a lot of tools but a massage table that you know, is hydraulic and that lifts. Not only is that amazing for our patients, but it's almost an absolute must for us as Makes practitioners. Sense. You know, and then the ability to use them appropriately. So part of our, you know, mentorship that we do with the new grads that kind of come out is is learning to use the table to their advantage, learning to use body mechanics Prevent and injury. weight mm-hmm. in a way that, you know, you're not just using your thumbs and your hands. And I do. I use a lot of my thumbs. I will definitely have arthritis as I get older and, you know, take one for the team kind of thing. That's okay. But um, there are definitely ways that you can kind of modify, you know, what you're doing to still show up, you know, and give a good massage while still protecting your body. So we are 13 years in. We have a, a, we've got a lot of bench strength we've got a lot of disciplines uh that we're covering and you've grown literally in physical space Mm -hmm. two and three times do and maybe not by design or by plan initially what does the the future look like Mm -hmm. for affinity wellness i mean we have run out of space unless um Unit number one ever decides to sell, but uh, you know, for right now, I think we've we've maxed out kind of where we can physically grow. Now it's a matter of, you know, building the bench and filling the rooms and getting mm. the right practitioners, and and that's part of the journey too. You used to just hire a warm body because <laughs> mm. you're desperate and you need to pay bills and whatever. Now our focus is really on finding the right team members who understand our values, who appreciate the clinic culture you know, that really kind of have the same philosophy when it comes to patient care, you know, that it is that journey that we're kind of going along with them and supporting them, understanding that the in-house referral, you know, what is best for your patient, it's not your patient and you Mm. need to keep them, right? What's best for patient, which, you know, ultimately leads to better patient retention anyway, because they know you care about them as opposed to just a number. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, my role has, has definitely shifted from working, you know, six days a week, treating for eight hours a day, plus all the admin. You know, I'm down to two shifts a week. Mm-hmm. Um, I've chosen that, even though, you know, I've talked for a couple of years that I was going to retire from the massage therapy world. But my clients, I love them, right? Mm-hmm. I think I get as much out of my experience with them as they do. Hopefully they get a little bit more. That's what they're paying me for. But... <laughs> Um, it's just, yeah, it's intentional for me to stay in the game, but my role has become more of a coach and a mentor. So more mentor for the RMTs, more coach for my front staff, and my coach, you know, kind of for the rest of the rehab team. So how do we uh, transfer that that knowledge? You you live it, you practice it, you you model it. How do you make sure that that quality that you deliver and that consistency that you offer the patient uh, transcends to each of the rooms and each of the practitioners? I'm not a micromanager. Um, Mm. 
despite me having specific details that I do <laughs> like, right? And that's building out processes and systems. Mm-hmm. We do the one-on-one mentorship with regards to the massage. So both, both Cynthia and I, you know, have been practicing for over 20 years. We usually tag team it when we do one-on-one mentorship because we like to have, say, one of us on the table, mm. one, you know, showing the other therapist what to do so that they can do it. And then you get feedback as like, oh, no, that feels a little bit different. You know, let's change our body weight a little bit, you know, here. And then they get that one-on-one feedback immediately. And all of a sudden, the light bulbs come on and you're like, oh, right. And sometimes it's it's just a slight shift. It's shifting that intention of what they're doing instead of going through the motion. School's intense. Like, it's just absolutely every day there's something, you know, new. You're learning the terminology and then you're learning the pathology and biomechanic, like just everything. And so... They learn what to do for exams. I always say, I'm not your person to come to before you've written your boards, right? Happy to talk to you. Once boards are over, you've passed, and I'll teach you about what's happening really, you know, in real life on Mm -hmm. the table, you know, and what patients want. Most of the time, it's, you know, it's understanding expectations, you know, and, and I have to challenge both the practitioners and patients over the years. You know, the complaints, if we've ever had it's, based on missed expectation right Mm, if you go in and you've only ever been to a spa and you've always had a full body relaxation massage and then you come in and you've circled on the consent form shoulders and neck you say your shoulders and neck are sore and then your therapist works on your shoulders and neck because that's what you've allowed them you know accordingly to the consent but now you're upset because you wanted a full body massage with the neck and shoulders focused on. And so it's learning to have, you know, better communication, understanding what the patient truly wants, and that dialogue back and forth. And so understanding for patients, tell your therapist what you want and what you don't like. Mm -hmm. You're paying, Mm -hmm. right? And also it's, you know, our job as therapists to build that rapport with our patients to understand we may know where we need to, you know, design this treatment plan in the future, but we need to build your trust or you need to trust that, you know, I know what I'm doing. You've read somewhere and whatever, and you want this, or honestly, most of the time you're feeling pain somewhere, but Mm -hmm. the reality is pain is not always the cause, right? Often we find pain on the opposite side, you know, the side that's being stretched or the side that's being weak, but you might be tight somewhere else. And so it's just, yeah, it's that dialogue back and forth, but kind of empowering our patients to be part of their journey and not mm-hmm. just being a passive kind of passenger. So is there, and I think of the, the work that you do, it is intimate. It is very intimate. Uh, and, and there is both the physical side and the mental side, and there's enormous amount of research around touch being mm. so important to the well-being of, of humans. Is there... Is there a memorable experience or something that you can share without sharing that that really made you go, oh, this is why I do what I do? I mean, there's countless mm. from over the years. You know, I love to serve. I think I've been doing massage since I was 10. My parents would purposely, my mother especially, <laughs> she would have me in the passenger side of the back seat so that I could give her a scalp massage as we drove off to Alberta, oh, right? Oh, I like, love it. My dad, you know, always had the tight shoulders. But after I first graduated, I originally did my first three years in Saskatchewan. Okay. And then we moved to Banff. And I was working um, at the Upper Hot Springs. Again, kind of that spa environment, kind of what got me started. And I had this lady that came in with her daughter. So they're tourists. And she was just this incredibly stoic, stout Polish woman. I just remember this. And I'm like... I got to work on this lady. Like, she just looked so tight and so rigid. Yeah. But I found out kind of through the dialogue that she was here visiting her daughter. Husband had recently passed Mm. back in Poland. um, And so no English. So this part was a little bit tricky. The only upside, I think, at the Upper Hot Springs is that the walls weren't all the way up to the top. So there was a little bit of a, like, there was privacy, but you could still kind of hear. So ambient music. And I'm working on this lady, and she just starts shaking. Well, I'm a newer Uh, grad, so I'm actually scared to death that I'm hurting this woman, despite how tough she, you know, is presenting. 
And then she just starts heaving Mm -hmm. and sobbing. And I'm totally dumbfounded as to what to do. And finally, the daughter kind of hears. They chit-chat back in Polish. She kind of just says, no, she's good. And then I realized she was just having this emotional release. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, let it out, woman. Like, Because you realize just what a healing part this is. And it's, I see that often. I've had patients over the years whose, you know, spouse have gone into a home and there's not that connectedness right Mm -hmm. and it's a safe you know obviously non-sexual at all but just to have a safe kind Mm -hmm. of touch and what that feels like and you're seeing your yeah I mean our skin is an organ and Mm -hmm. there's just so much to that so it's um we forget sometimes the power you know the hand on the back of the shoulder or just a hand on someone's hand, even just with our friends, mm-hmm. you know what that connection is. So that's yeah. I I can't imagine. It was a good uh, learning experience. Yeah. So the the industry is um, there's changes coming to all industries. Are there changes that you're seeing? coming into the wellness industry or any um, regulatory or any challenges that you are facing as you operate and grow and manage your team in Affinity Wellness? That's a bit tricky. Um, In the past, it's been a bit of a sore spot for me. Oh, Um, (laughs) I didn't mean to pick. No, it's good. And, And working through that. So it's I wouldn't say, you know, from that AI perspective, you know, that we're really being bombarded at the moment with, you know, major changes. Because we are a service, you know, one-on-one, person-to-person, that's not affecting us. We can utilize it to our benefit. Mm-hmm. You know, we use mm-hmm. JNAP, so, mm-hmm. you know, we've got that online. We've got the ability to text. So, you know, the technology has really helped our business in that yep. aspect. Um, I think the biggest struggle for me, and I'm part of a large group of clinic owners across Canada and even into the States, our biggest struggle is trying to find practitioners that one, see the value of an organization like that we have Mm. and see the value with, you know, the mentorship, the culture, the way the things are all set up. And I'm not sure how much of it is, you know, generational, like the age Mm. or the schooling, or what the dialogue truly is. I do feel like it's shifting slightly in the positive in the last you know, couple months, but it's always been, well, I can get this cheaper somewhere else, and I can get this. And I come from a family of you know, business owners. Granted, none of us as healthcare workers truly come out with any business knowledge, and yet we're way out of our league when it comes to that. And so, again, my part of my organization, it, it's more about the business part and how we manage this. And so just finding practitioners that, that see past just the dollars, right, that want to be part of a culture, that, that feel, you know, that it's not just about the cheapest place to go. Mm-hmm. And I used to be really upset and saw it as more of a slight to me that, I was being greedy. I'm like, I have probably taken home less of a paycheck than most for the entire business. We do. Um, Especially if you, you know, balance it out for 80 plus hours, you know, a week. And again, I chose that and and that's my thing. And I love it most of the time. Mm -hmm. My leadership team now really kind of has helped take a lot of the burden um, and, and feeling like, you have a team that kind of can, can support you, and it's not so lonely. Um, lots of lots of lonely nights of just, oh my gosh, I'm so out of my league, and what am I going to do? And so I'm finding, yeah, that that some of the newer hires really just have a, a better appreciation for what we offer. If if I can take a a little bit of a trip down a rabbit hole with that, I think there is, and and I think this is an age thing. I think this is an age thing as we become a bit more wise uh, we we have maybe less patience mm-hmm. or tolerance so I love that it's um, uh, a level that you're at or a phase that you're at that you're able to say 
these, this is the, the crest. This mm-hmm. is the brand. This is what Affinity Wellness stands for. This is what we believe in. So you've got your, your values on your sleeve and it allows practitioners to see it for what it is very transparently. Mm-hmm. And you have the ability to sort yourself in or sort yourself out and and the the path of out of it's cheaper here or it's less expensive here mm, it is but it's lonely it's challenging you don't have those support mechanisms or that that team behind mm-hmm. you to help you so there 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 are pros and cons to Absolutely. both uh but i think maybe we i mean i'm thankful that I've finally gotten to this, you know, stage in my life where I can just appreciate, you know, affinity for what it is and, and stand proud in that. We've done a lot of work to get here. You know, I've mm-hmm. done a lot of personal growth and leadership. So how I can show up as a leader and and a mentor to my team, understanding, right? The decisions I make in the business are to ensure that the rest of, you know, the team has a job to come to tomorrow. Seriously. Right? Yeah. And I never really saw it that way. Right. It was always, you know, a feeling more of like them against me. And it's like, you know, I'm the leader now. I need to ensure that, you know, the ones that rely on this income to pay their mortgage and feed their kids, like this is important stuff. And it's very you know, important. it needs to be sustainable. And I need to make smart decisions and I need to bring the right people onto the right team. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's a passion mm-hmm. and it's a calling. And, and you've, you've certainly um, answered to that. Mm, for better or worse. <laughs> well, and, yeah. and actually that's the legacy that we leave behind. It's, uh, I think what you've built is impressive. And I think those that travel through the door, both as practitioners and, clinic and patients, uh, can see that. I think it's, it's mm-hmm. very much a, a part of the practice. So how... Probably the last question that I have for you is around um, staying current. I'm, and again, I'm, I mentioned it this morning in a podcast. I'm listening to Life Force with Tony Robbins, and I'm listening to the the um, medical doctors that as they come out of med school, within months they're quote-unquote uh, – out of date in some of the advancements or the techniques or the uh, healthcare um, practices. So how does, what, what does affinity wellness do or not Mm -hmm. to stay current in those, those changes or those advancements in the, in the care? Yeah. I mean, luckily we're not changing as quickly as, you know, medicine. However, there's still, you know, lots of stuff, you know, everything from, you remember back when, you know, egg yolks were bad for you and whatever, like things <laughs> have been debunked Nutrition. over the years, right? Like if mm-hmm. we don't kind of stay on top of that, um, you know, we as individuals need to do our continuing education credits. You know, obviously some, we've got a couple of them that are like research junkies. And so they're always up on the latest kind of information. So that portion is kind of that individual basis having new grads kind of come through and and mentoring them were, you know, at least ear to the ground with, you know, kind of how that's shifting. And then I've chosen to kind of be part of this huge organization. It's all allied healthcare workers or healthcare clinics across Canada Mm. and and the U S. And so kind of the broad scope of practitioners, but it is, it's always, you know, different insurance stuff that's going on, um, regulatory stuff. And we're always kind of in the know, which is, you know, any of the AI stuff that I've ever learned, which I'm now learning a little bit more as I'm coming here, which is super exciting um, because I'm definitely not a techie person, just ask my children. Um, But at least I'm being made aware of it so that I can at least delve into it a little bit more and and figure out where it, you know, it serves us or, or doesn't, but try and stay ahead of the curve. I said last question, but actually you, you made me think of another. So as we travel through insurances, mm-hmm. uh, there are a number of disciplines that I think are covered through insurance plans, but I think there's a lot that aren't. Uh, is, there, is there work 
you think that can be done by lobbying groups or colleges or boards that can work with our insurance plans? So again, specifically through, and and now I'm going to be, this is my voice, okay. uh, not yours, or maybe it is. Drives me crazy that I'm filling out an insurance form uh, to see if they'll cover me and I'm ticking off whether I smoke or whether I drink and I get it, but there's nothing in there that states how much sugar I take mm-hmm. in. And I feel it's a very antiquated, uh, system. And I feel that there could be some, um, advancements in our, in our benefits and insurance plans that reward those that are trying to be healthier yeah. and, and maybe cover some things nutrition yeah. nutrition Absolutely. huge i don't know if it's covered i don't believe it currently is um you know athletic therapy wasn't it's now part of icbc's mm. kind of new rule um, that's that's great news manual yeah. osteopathy is not if you have a doctor of o- osteopathy a lot of insurance companies will cover that well at least um uh, veterans affairs will right osteopathy so is like ike Right, okay. the manual osteopathy. Okay. And so that's kind of a mix between a little bit of massage and chiro and physio and kind of more that holistic practice. Okay. Okay. But because it's not regulated, and most of this kind of comes into play with not having the regulatory boards mm. and not having the colleges. And even just as of July, and I'm not exactly sure the reasoning behind it, but a lot of the colleges have amalgamated. So, mm. you know, massage therapy, chiro, and I'm going to even don't quote me, naturopath, like we're in one college now Mm. and physio and whatever. So I'm not sure how that's going to play out specifically when we come to board exams because there's not a board because there's not a specific college for each modality anymore. So I think that onus is going to play a little bit more onto the universities um, or the schools that are in there. But when it comes to, you know, kind of the overall health and the well-being, I've heard of plans that will give you you know, a health spending plan towards this. I've heard of some Soft fancy ones plan. Yep. that will give you a, a insurance rate discount, mm. like if you are going to the gym and you are doing that kind of stuff. Mm. But definitely, you know, why we've moved, you know, affinity to kind of the multidisciplinary practice that we're doing is because we want people to feel empowered to take control of their health and be proactive in it. You know, it's I always like kind of our philosophy always started from my grandma. She mm. she still loved on the farm at eighty, up and down that hill to the barn every day, watering and feeding her horses and still riding. Oh my gosh. She would 80. laugh at the fact yeah. that we have to go to a gym to stay fit. <laughs> right? But I mean it, it comes down to independence and I've always talked with, you know, my in laws and my mom and The more active we can stay, especially, Mm -hmm. you know, I get it. We, you know, when we have little kids and we're busy, you know, some people have the privilege of of getting to the gym or, you know, having that time to be really focused on their health and their activity. But as we get a little bit older and a little bit more time, we need to make that a priority. Women, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. our bone health, you know, Mm -hmm. osteoporosis, weight bearing exercise, so incredibly important. And nutrition, you know, I'm, my girlfriend's a gastroenterologist and so really, kind of seeing her practice kind of moving more into the nutritional education portion. You know, it's one thing to scope and, you know, cut out polyps and, and deal with the after effects. But what about the nutrition part? So how do we get there? How do we increase our fiber? You know, all Feeding those things. Feeding microbiome and being Absolutely. aware of what we put in and how it. Yeah. It's like always fixing We're not eating car. for one. No, we're not. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. yeah. It's, we're not there yet. <laughs> But I hope that we can kind of keep moving in that direction. Kyla, thank you for thank coming you. in and giving us a peek uh, on your journey and, and all things affinity. And I appreciate your time. And I, I look forward to uh, many, many, many more years of affinity wellness in the community. Thank you so much. Thank Katie. you. Good day.